expect them to do it. Great taste makes it the Football best. League, the American Football Conference. Today, from San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium, it's the Denver Broncos versus the San Diego Chargers. Today's game is brought to you by Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste. By the new Chrysler Corporation. For 1982, Chrysler has the cars, the quality, and the prices America needs. By Champion Spark Plug Company, Champion, world's number one seller. And by Alcoa, producers of energy saving aluminum. Absolutely gorgeous day here in San Diego, California today. The San Diego Chargers have won the toss. They will receive. Freddie Steinford is set to put his foot to the ball. It's a good one. James Brooks will field it five yards deep. He's going to bring it out. Chargers will start from their own 25-yard line. A great return by Jimmy Brooks. As we take a look at the offensive scheme of things for the Chargers, Fouts will start at quarterback. Brooks and Muncie as running backs. The wide receivers, and what a trio you're looking at. Joyner, Chandler, and Kellen Winslow, the tight end with five touchdown catches last week against the Raiders. The offensive line, Shields, Wilkerson, Mason, Ed White, Chuck Laban is starting at right tackle for an injured Russ Washington. Here we go from the I formation. Chandler. West Chandler, an outstanding grab. Bill, we just saw something that we may see a lot of today if Dan Fouts is fortunate enough to when he puts Winslow at the fullback spot to get Billy Thompson playing in the middle of the field. That's what that whole formation is there to do. He did it on that occasion, and he'll do so until Thompson changes position. A first down now at the 46. Again from the eye, Muncie, sweep right. And he powers his way for nine. Radishar finally drags him down. Chuck Muncy, 14 touchdowns already this year. That's the most in the American Football Conference. It'll be second down in less than one. The ball spotted just outside the Bronco 35. Now you take a look at the linebackers and the defensive backs, Smith, Kyle Thompson, and Steve Foley. Lone setback is Muncie. He has the football. And he has a first down. So the Chargers, John, are really moving the football early. Phil, I tell you what. Fouts has a game plan, and he's noticed that, that when he puts Winslow in the fullback position, it does several things. Number one, it puts Billy Thompson in the middle of the field where he can't contain the run the way they'd like to have him do. It also puts him in the middle of the field where they can throw to their wide receiver. Now, you've seen them run away from where he's positioned. And when he's when they're running the ball and they're also throwing the ball to their wide receivers now if that continues uh, Thompson's gonna have to change another first down for the Chargers they lead the NFL in first downs 283 swing pass Muncy and a flag goes down first man to him was Perry Smith trips him up he dives ahead to about the 27 yard line however I think it'll be against San Diego thrown in the area where it is normally holding against the offense it's an illegal shift against the offense. They throw so many screens, Phil. Everybody's looking for them. They do it from so many different positions. They do it from so many different formations. They throw double screens. It's one of the things that Fouts does as well as anyone, and I think it goes with the structure of their passing game. He doesn't take long to throw the ball, so they better get on their horse back into the secondary if you're a linebacker. When you do that, he's by already throwing the ball Illegal out to his halfback. Number 89, offense. First down. 
There you take a look at it, San Diego, the most penalized team in the National Football League, averaging about eight penalties a game. Not too many offensively, though, Phil, and uh, that's why they've scored 30 points or more on an average. Uh, that's, that's, to me, awesome. Uh, the bulk of their penalties, you're right, John, have been against the defense, and that has caused a lot of problems. First and 15, Dan, all the time in the world, he's got Severs, and it is almost picked off by Bob Swenson. Dan trying to float that ball out. It just hung up a little longer than he wanted it to. Well, Dan's trying to get the ball out there to Severs, who is, who is covered by two linebackers, 51 and 53. You can see right here at the bottom of your picture. The wide zone coverage shows you that Billy Thompson is not in his normal tight safety position, and until he gets there, they're going to try and exploit it. Now you take a look at Bob Swenson's statistics. 6'3", 225 in his sixth year. Second and 15 against Balthus. Plenty of time. Winslow! Another first down for San Diego. Billy Thompson and Larry Evans in on the stop, but not before Kellen takes up about 17 big ones. Okay, this is a perfectly thrown ball. You get, Kellen, you get a guy when he's hot, you don't let him rest. Last week, five touchdown receptions. This week, they started fast. They're putting the ball in the air. They know they've got to get a jump on, on Denver because if they don't, they know they're in for a long afternoon. First and 10, charges at the 15. Winslow in motion to the top of your screen. Drop by Muncie. the new dimension in the San Diego offense along with James Brooks. You can remember a couple years ago when Fouts was throwing for 5,000 yards a year. He still didn't have this dimension. Now he's got it and their offense is almost impossible to defend when they're playing well. John, that's Muncy's 15th touchdown this year. That is the most in the National Football League. He has been awesome. You're exactly right. This is the element the Chargers have lacked until this year. Well, you take a look. Look at the real top teams. Denver with a great running back would be just as awesome. San Francisco can't get the ball in the end zone because once you get inside the 15, that's when you need the great running back. That's the dimension this man has put into this football field. And if they just play a little bit of defense, right now they'd be the best team in the game. That has been the problem all year long is the defense for San Diego. There's an injured player down at the 10-yard line. He is Perry Smith. And that could be real trouble for Denver because he's filling in for a guy who's injured. That's right. When they, and I was going to mention we didn't get time. Uh, San Diego was running up and down the field so fast. We didn't get time to mention the fact that Lewis Wright has been put on the injured reserve. So he'll be out for a month. If they get in the playoffs, which many people think they will, he'll be ready to play possibly late in the season in playoff games. But when, that, when he's out of there, it's almost like losing two people because they put him one-on-one -on -one against the other team's best receiver and just let him have a go at it and he comes down with as many balls as does his opponent yeah. now when he's out of there it really puts a burden on the whole defense it makes everybody change the way they play a little it doesn't give them the luxury that that they have when he's in there you know you talk about the denver broncos and there he is chuck muncie right there second year with san diego actually his first year and he took a lot of heat last year john because he fumbled the football so many times this year he has held on to it and everyone has a remedy for fumbling you know I've heard coaches they send balls home with running backs and they tell them to sleep with it and do it I think the best way to handle it is just don't validate it just let it wear off and I think they've done that here Fouts tells me that Chuck Muncie could not be a better team man than he is look at this one the Jets have beaten the Baltimore Colts no surprise there 25 nothing Pittsburgh has shut out over the Rams boy big problems for Georgia Cincinnati laying it on the Cleveland Browns. That game up in Lake Erie, fourth quarter, 41-21. <laughs> They're laying it on a lot of people. <laughs> St. Louis over New England. I'll tell you, poor Ronnie Earhart. I did that game last week in Buffalo. The Hail Mary play to end it. He just cannot win for anything. Buffalo over Washington by a touchdown. And now that Perry Smith has walked off the field, Rolf Anushka will try and make it a 7 to nothing game. He's missed five extra points this year. From Ed Luther's hold, it is perfect. 
Well, with less than three minutes gone here in the opening period, the San Diego Chargers have drawn first blood. In Mission Valley, San Diego, California, Ralph Banerska will tee it up and give the Denver Broncos their first look at the football offensively here today. Back deep to receive is Wade Manning in his second year out of Ohio State. There you look at the Chargers scoring drive. Two and a half minutes, they travel 74 yards. Muncie's 14-yard touchdown run caps it. It'll be Manning at the 11-yard line. And he is really nailed. It is Keith Ferguson. Preston. You take a look at Ray Preston, the guy that started for San Diego for the past couple of years and has had a tough time getting back in the lineup this year. Craig Morton is back after a week with a shoulder injury. Morton will spearhead this attack. Dave Preston, Rick Perros, the running backs. The guys he'll be throwing to. Watson up church and Riley Odoms. The offensive line, Studdard, Glassick, Billy Bryant. Paul Howard and Claudie Miner, who played his college ball eight years ago here at San Diego State. 12-14 to telecast. Did you expect the Denver Broncos to start slowly on offense? Why? Well, I did mention, really, Phil, that I didn't expect them to start fast. And the reason I said that is, number one, they've come off a losing road game. Number two, they've got they've got Craig Morton playing when he hasn't played for a couple weeks, and he's really just sucking it up to play. And number three, San Diego is as hot as they've been all year. Preston across the right side. He's out near the 30-yard line. The middle linebacker Bob Horn is there to drag him down. Pick up of about five yards on the play. You wonder what this uh, Denver offense would be like with a great running back. We'll talk more about that. Here's a look at the San Diego defensive scheme. Woodcock, Johnson, Kelcher, and Jones. Linebackers low. Bob Horn and Lyndon King. And the defensive backs. Boy, they had their problems this year. Ellis, Buchanan, Edwards, and Shaw. Paros, Horton, double pump. Oh, he's got a man. And he cannot hit Paros coming out of the backfield. He had Rick Upchurch wide open down the middle. Horton, the highest rated passer in the National Football League. Leading about 62% of his passes. And I'll tell you what, if he can continue that pace, then I will be surprised and he will show me that I am wrong. Number one, he got his right arm hurt. And it's a very difficult thing to throw the ball with pain because it changes your motion. He can handle the pain. It's the touch you lose. And I'm going to be surprised if he isn't high and it isn't tough for him. That's a good point. Very good point. Third down and five. Dave Preston, the lone man in the backfield. Morton will put it up. And he's going to be down. or whether to let this man who's carried him as far as he has for so many years go on his own determinism. Now, Craig Morton just flat said to Dan, I'm playing. So he let him have his way. I think if his effectiveness is at all tarnished, he'll take him out quickly. That's the 47th time Denver quarterbacks have been sacked. Luke Prestridge kicks it away. That's a good one. James Brooks from the 25. A good return out near the 40. And the Chargers for the second time today with good field position. A 49-yard punt, a 15-yard return. The Chargers have the football. They already have the lead. It's seven to nine. registered on the face of Charger coach Don Coriel. <laughs> He's a fun little laughs on game day, isn't he? <laughs> First and 10, San Diego, the ball at the 39. Take a look at Dan Fouts' statistics from last week. Six touchdown passes. Brooks. He's out across the 40-yard line, giving forward progress to near the 43. You know, everybody, everybody has a good year once in a while. Rulon Jones last year had a great year, has done the same thing this year, and it doesn't surprise anybody. When you take a look at the pictures, you see one dominant force. They're going to do something to nullify this man. Their plan is to put four people on him, and it's going to take it. Rulon Jones, second year defensive end. Second down. Brooks, right side. And a flag 
goes down as Brooks tries to outrun Bob Swenson. He can't do it. Swenson grabs hold first, and Randy Gratishar finishes him off. Brooks with a total of over 1,500 yards this year, combined yardage. He leads the NFL. You know, Phil, there's been an awful lot of hitting already today. The tempo has picked up so early, it's almost like you 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 can relate to, to fast tempo when you're in Mile High Stadium. But down here in Denver, the air might be a little thicker, but the intensity is just as high. Now, let's take a look at Tom Jackson. Here's a man that runs all over the field until somebody meets him. Number 89. And that's somebody. Offense. Second down. Was Don Masick, the center. Holding call against West Chandler. Move San Diego back to a second down and 10 situation. Heavy rains for the last day and a half here in San Diego. In fact, two inches have fallen. And it just cleared this morning. Ground is a little bit treacherous. Another field was covered. Bounce with time. Unloads. Chandler. There's an acquisition that came late in the year for them. Dan Fouts again tried to go to his wide receiver. You mentioned that the weather, being a little inclement, might have an effect on the play. It's an ideal situation for a quarterback, and I'll tell you why, Phil. The middle of the field is wet, but the sides are dry. It allows the wide receivers to do their thing, and it keeps the good pass rush from getting to the quarterback, making him hurry his throws. It's an offensive lineman's dream. A 44-yard pickup for San Diego. Look at that final. Cincinnati has buried the ground by 20. Chandler, two catches for 73 yards already. Dan will put it up on first and 10. Muncie. And the Broncos did a nice job of snipping it out. Harry Smith and Reuben Carter combined to bring him down. Dan Reeves mentioned last night that last week was the first time they've really been blown out. Their defense had played superbly all year long. Last week, they did get blown out by Cincinnati. You take the first two series of today's game, and it's a replay of what happened last week. Now, when a team has a down week, a lot of times you start second-guessing yourself. You don't go right back to start, and they're having a little trouble doing it right now, and Dan's concerned. Second down. Three yards to go. The ball at the pin. Muzzy. First down, it'll be first and goal, Chargers. John, you talked about the intensity of this ball game. It almost appears as if the intensity level is a continuation of the first time these two teams met. Well, only the conditions are a whole lot more severe because for San Diego to be in a spot to get in the playoffs, they have got to beat Denver today or they can close up shop. I know mathematically it's not over, but realistically they know it is if they don't win today. First and goal, San Diego. And he's going to be out of bounds at the one-yard line. To the one-yard line. Bill Stone with John Brody, San Diego Stadium. The Chargers on a 14-yard touchdown run by Chuck Putsey. Took a 7 to nothing lead with less than three minutes gone in the ball game. The Broncos were forced to punt, and San Diego is knocking once again. It is second and goal from the one-foot line. How many times have you seen Denver's defensive line handled like they've been handled in the last two series of plays? I mean to tell you, San Diego's offensive line is popping. John Capaletti has checked into the ball game. He's normally the short yardage man for the Chargers, but it is Muncy! at a replay. Chuck Muncy is the man we mentioned inside the 15-yard line. It puts a new dimension to their offense. I think 16 touchdowns says enough in it on its own. The record is what? 19 by Jim Taylor and Earl Campbell. So he's within three of that. We're still early in this ball game. Ralph Anerska tries to make it a 14 to nothing game. And he does it. Wow. Seven 
50s rate of play in the first period. It is San Diego up 14 to nothing. Downtown San Diego, the Coronado Islands are set off the coast here, and you wonder if maybe Dan Reeves wish he were out on the Coronado Islands right now. His club trails 14 to nothing as Rolf Van Erschke will bounce one at the 10. And out of bounds, the flag goes down, and San Diego will kick it again, this time from the 30-yard line. A couple of flags are down back at the 40-yard line. I suppose that's offside against the Chargers. It is, and it's funny. What will stop momentum? We take a look at the second touchdown, and Phil, I mean, to tell you, it's a perfect team, illustration of the way the game's gone in the first two series of plays. They have moved the ball off the line of scrimmage. They have put the ball, put Denver back, and... I mean, if somebody doesn't put their thumb in the dike pretty quick for Denver, it's going to be a repeat only in reverse of what happened the first time these two teams met. When Denver got off 24 to nothing before the game was even out of the hat. And it looks like the same thing's happened. Now, that's exactly right, John. 7.47 to play. We are only halfway through the first period. San Diego has had the football for two possessions and have stuck touchdowns on the board both times. Look at the touchdown. San Diego now with 50 TDs this year. That is incredible. You know, you just take a look. You start you start putting out 25% more production than the next best offense in this game. You're doing some work. Now you have to wonder what this team would be like if they found a defense. A little squibber. Egloff will let it go through. It is Wade Manning at the 18-yard line. Still on his feet across the 30, a fine bit of broken field running by Wade Manning. Tackled by Bob Gregor, a 13-yard return. Certainly seemed like a lot more than that. <laughs> I'll tell you, running east and west, you don't pick up too many yards. There's a look at the AFC West standings. Denver ahead by a half game over Kansas City. The Chiefs beaten by the Lions on Thanksgiving Day. San Diego with a victory over Denver today. Could really throw this race into one heck of a dog fight. Well, you'd, you'd be putting it with eight teams for five spots. None of them since. That's exactly right. Rick Upchurch, Steve Watson, near side. Give second man on the cross bucket is Dave Preston. And he gets maybe a yard before he is really hammered there. There's a good shot at Dan Fouts, the rookie Eric Seaver, Kevin Winslow. Well, he's, he's discussing the very thing we started out the ball game bringing up. He is being covered by a couple linebackers sometimes only one. Dan knows he's got to get the Seagulls to make their offense effective when they cover him with a linebacker. Hey, you take a look at the overall records and the possible wild card teams, the one with the stars and the division leaders. John mentioned there are only eight spots available. In motion, it is Riley Odom. Horton will put it up on second and eight. His intended receiver is Tony Reed. The ball was just not there. It's high again, and that's the problem the guy has touch problem. The ball goes out of your hand and you haven't got as good a control as you normally do. Craig Morton didn't miss two of the balls that he's missed today in five games in a row. Now, he just doesn't miss those kind of throws. The Chargers on third and eight sent five defensive backs into the ball game. Three wide receivers for Denver. Rick Upchurch, Haven Moses, and Steve Watson. What a game Steve Watson had the first time these two teams met. He had a season Morton out of the shotgun. Pressure. Preston. And he has hit hard, fumbles the football that goes out of bounds. Wyatt Henderson really cut his legs out. A very well thrown ball that time, Phil. And it couldn't have happened at a better time for Denver because that is the mechanic that put the thumb in the dike. You listen to these stands right now. They're a, they're a whole lot more quiet than they were before that last play. Perfectly thrown ball to Preston, who's been their all-purpose guy whenever they get in a third and eight situation. Same personality, very effective. A pickup of 12 yards, a first down for Denver. At the 44, pitch near side. It is Reed. And he'll get maybe three yards on the play before Gary Big Hands Johnson shuts it down. Louis Woody Lowe is also there. 
John Morton sat out with a shoulder injury last week in Cincinnati. You wonder, can a quarterback recover in a week or two from that kind of an injury? Well, we've discussed it. He doesn't recover fully, and uh, he thinks he's well enough to play. Now, the pain we've already discussed, I thought it was a separation. It is not. And where it hurts him is underneath, underneath the arm, even though he got hit on the top. And I think that's a very difficult place to have it hurt. The tight end, Riley Bodum's in motion. Morton to the air again. Near side, he has got a man. It is his running back, Dave Preston. Broncos love to throw to the running backs. Well, he does it well. I'll tell you, when a quarterback can throw to any receiver that comes open, I think he's got a plus. And that's, I think, one of the qualities that's, uh, that's allowed Craig Morton to be in his 17th year of professional football is his ability to know what's going on out there. Well, the first time these two teams met, as we talked earlier in the telecast, Craig Morton, 17 of 18 completions, <laughs> over 300 yards and four touchdowns. And they weren't all little fiddle passes. He, he was firing that ball down the field. Third three, running back Canada and Reed. Two tight ends now for Denver. Play action. Morton, he has got Ron Egloff, and he has the first down inside the San Diego 39-yard line. Willie Buchanan and Pete Shaw are there to bring him down. That's Denver's second first down today. San Diego already has seven. We still have five minutes, 30 seconds to play in the opening period. Take a look at what Craig Morton has thrown. He has thrown five balls either to his backs or on little delay patterns, the ball not covering more than 15 or 20 yards before it gets to its receiver. He's been effective picking up two first downs. We'll see if he can go down the field with it. Morton, 3 of 5 for 26 yards. Rick Upchurch put wide right. Now they're going to stop it and they bring in a dry football. We talked about the reins and they're in the part of the field right now, John, where the footing is a little bit slippery. It is in the middle. Has to be an advantage for the offensive team because they know where they're going. The defense isn't sure. And it's an, I'll tell you, it's an advantage for the home team when you have a spotty, wet field. They know where the dry spots are. Play action. Morton. Going for the out pattern. Upchurch. Great coverage there, Willie Buchanan. Tell you, that ball's thrown about two or three yards shorter. Buchanan has an interception. Well, he knew that. He threw that into the cheap seats on purpose. There were, he's got a lot of strength in his arm. He hasn't convinced me that his touch is the same, but he does have strength. Morton, three of six now for 26 yards. Do you remember the first year when Denver got into the playoffs? This guy was playing hurt every week, coming out of the hospital on Thursday, coming out on Friday. And he's just liable to do it right through the continuation of this season because if there's one thing he won't do, it's let anybody get the best of him. He is an incredible competitor. Second and ten. Morton over the middle, and it is almost caught by Steve Watson. He really took a shot by Alan Ellis, who is starting today for an injured Mike Williams. The right cornerback spot. A job Steve Watson has done in 1981, John. You bet. This, this is, is one of the guy? very few that he has dropped all year. He's the catalyst that really got Denver's offense on the move early in the season, and I think the whole team picked up because of this guy's outstanding play. That was a critical drop. Wilbur Young has come into the ball game now. Leroy Jones has come out. Young, exceptionally good on the pass rush. He's number 99, left defensive end. Picked off by Willie Buchanan. Give credit to Young and Kelcher for that interception. Under normal conditions, Craig Morton would have taken a sack. This time he tried to make a great play out of a bad situation with people in his face. When you do that, the ball is going to go where you do not attend it on many occasions. This was an excellent interception by Buchanan. Played the ball perfectly. A mistake he'd like to have back. Oh, yeah. Something you don't want to do in this game is give the ball to the San Diego offense. Muncie. And he runs right through Bob Swenson. Oh, what power from Chuck Muncie. Larry Evans finally bumps him out of bounds. Next Sunday on NBC Sports, see all the highlight scores and late-breaking news from around the league on NFL 81 with Brian Gumbel. Then a 
doubleheader of important football action. First, New England travels to Miami for a critical AFC East matchup. Then in games, the good to side division leads. Kansas City is in Denver, and Buffalo takes on San Diego. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area next Sunday on NBC Sports. Now you take a look at Willie Buchanan. Fourth interception of the year gives San Diego the football. Second less than one, Muncie. And he trips and falls at the 35 and lose about a half a yard. Muncie now six carries for 28 yards, but two big touchdowns. Tampa Bay got, got it together after getting off to a very slow start with New Orleans. It was 14 to nothing once in that game. And Green Bay came oh. back on Minnesota the same way. So uh, who's going to win from week to week? Can you ever remember a year where there have been more surprises like this in the first quarter? Yeah, every year I think I say that. <laughs> Sam Clapham is in the ball game now as an offensive tackle for San Diego. Chargers third, less than one. They've converted 53% of their third down situations this year. A good look at Dan Fouts. Oh, look at this. They're going to put it up for Muncie. And Perry Smith knocks it away. Third and a foot, you wonder. <laughs> you wonder a lot. I don't wonder. I think that it was a great play by Perry Smith. I, I know Dan Fouts' personality. They know right now they would like to get some more points on the board. I think it's a perfect time third and a foot to throw a play action pass. Look, you've got all the linemen giving themselves up. There's going to be no pass rush. Now if you can just get one man free on a quarterback. He couldn't do it. Greg Boyd made an excellent play to force Faust to throw it a little bit more he'd like, and Perry Smith made a better one. San Diego's first punt of the ball game comes with 3.46 left to play on the first period. George Roberts is averaging 42 yards a punt. Boots this way. Wade Manning watches it go out of bounds, and they'll mark it at the 23-yard line. So 3.39 left to play in the opening quarter. San Diego with a 14 to nothing lead, a 43-yard putt by this man. Good for 42 yards. And again, the AFC Western Division standings. Boy, for years, it was San Diego and Oakland. And Kansas City a long time ago, but nobody expected them to be where they are today as quickly as, they, as they've done it. As Denver looking to regain that form of three years ago, 1978. And the clock goes are not far away. Rick Upchurch wide to the right. Motion Steve Watson. Play action. Morton. To his tight end. He's got Odom wide open. Hit by Lyndon King, and I've got to believe, John, as if that was a blown coverage by San Diego. Something happened there. <laughs> well, they've had a lot of situations where it appeared to be blown coverage. That was a 23-yard pickup, and I think it was a play-action pass, a little delayed to Riley, and I'm concerned about his shoulder because he got up very slow. Good play selection. Remember, Morton and Dan Reeves, they go over the strategy of the ball game, and I think both of them are quarterbacks in their own right. Even though Reeves was a, was a halfback, he always played like a quarterback. I think they used very good play selection, and that was a perfect indication. Now, Riley Odoms has gone out holding that shoulder. Ron Egloff is in. Watson in motion. First man through. He is hit right away. That is Rick Carroll's, and a flag goes down. Now, the Chargers are jumping up and down like it is against the Broncos. I think that was the longest flag throw of the year. That maybe had to be 40 yards long. It's holding against Denver. Now John, we talked about San Diego's defense and the problems they have had this year. You wonder if it is the defenses they're trying to run or the personnel. Well, I don't think the personnel is poor. I think they've got some great players in critical spots. And Willie Kelsher, obviously Johnson, and I think they've made a fine acquisition in Willie. Holding number 85. Offense, first down. And even bigger, Glenn Edwards. Because I think Glenn Edwards is the one man they need back there to organize the whole group. Because when it gets past him, it's six points. And he's been a fine player for a long time. I'm glad to see them get him back. Well, they waved him in training camp, but it was a big surprise because he led this team last year in interceptions. Nobody could figure out why. First and 20, Morton, a little swing pass to Preston. What a job Lyndon King did of holding his ground. 
Preston trying with a little juke step did not work on <laughs> King. Pick up of only two. It'll be second and 18. Five defensive backs for San Diego. As you take a look at Dave Preston, Wyatt Anderson, Glenn Edwards, Pete Shaw, Alan Ellis, and Willie Buchanan. Talked about how short uh, Morton was throwing. Preston has three catches, John, for 18 yards. Well, the, all of his all of his balls have been thrown in medium range areas, and uh, I don't blame him. Second down from the shotgun. Preston. And his hand in motion. And there you get a look at how slippery and muddy it is out there. It is Lyndon King again who drags him down. Pick up of about 10 yards on the play. It'll still be third and long. You'll notice they're using all three of their wide receivers today whenever they can. Some of it because Odom is hurting. Morton hung in there just as well as a man can to put it to Moses. That was a late developing pattern. Easy little throw if you can hang in there. We'll take a look at Rick Upchurch. We mentioned all three of the wide receivers are in there. He had a little problem with the turf. One of the Chargers, five down linemen on defense. On third and seven. Preston. Dragged down there by Willie Buchanan at the 27-yard line. A lot of times, Phil, you'll see a man, and this is what San Diego's problem is right now. You'll see a man beat a linebacker, in this case a halfback, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He'll pick up seven or eight yards before the free safety puts him on his on his back. In this case, he beats the linebacker. When he does, there's no one between him and the next 15 yards. That's what team defense is about, and so far, San Diego hasn't been able to do that. This is a big series for the Broncos. One minute, 14 seconds to play. They're already trailing 14 and others. You should take a look at 37-year-old Dan Reeves in his first year as head coach of the Denver Ball Club. The lone running back is Rick Peros. Morton. Crossing pattern. He's got up church. Rick evades two tacklers, carries the ball inside the Charger 20-yard line. Willie Buchanan is there. A very heads-up play, Phil, and I'll tell you right now what's allowing Craig Morton to get the time he is. Up front, they're making good moves. This offensive lineman, Brian number 64. You've got Howard 60, Glassick 62. They've kept people out of his face in critical times. We have an injury timeout. Bob Horn is being tended to. We'll be back. And possibly will return. Riley Odoms has a shoulder injury. He will probably return also. Second down and two. Peros. He takes it to the San Diego Five, fumbles the football, and recovers. And the official says he was down by Glenn Edwards before the fumble. It was a good call. We've just seen a beautiful drive. The drive prior, they were stopped by an interception. This time, they get the ball inside their own 25-yard line. They've moved it down methodically. They've overcome a, a big penalty, and they're still in scoring position. We're seeing the first quarter ending. But remember, San Diego gives up 26 points, some odd points a game. Still within reach. As you look down at beautiful San Diego Stadium, we'll take a look at a few other scores around the National Football League. Atlanta over Houston, John, 10-0 in the second quarter. Well, Atlanta's another one of those teams that's starting to play well again. They were expected too early, and I think we saw 3 to nothing. Seattle over open. Surprises week in and week out. First and goal, Denver from the five. Second man, it is Rob Lytle. Look at Woody Lowe. What a job he did coming up to roll him out of bounds at the four-yard line. Great pursuit by the outside linebacker. You get great pursuit when you get good penetration by the outside linebacker. In this case, you see the man the Classic had to handle? He's the man that forced the play wide. When he did so, Lowe comes up in perfect pursuit. And that man was Alan Ellis, who was a surprise starter. He didn't even know he was going to play until just before game time. Mike Williams could not go. Running backs, Larry Canada, Dave Preston. Second and goal. Quick opener. It is Canada. Touchdown, Denver. Number 35, Larry Canada. 
You know what you don't see, Phil, very often? A misdirection play on the goal line, and that's exactly what you saw that time. They put their man in motion, who generally leads right through the hole. It's a tip, but so what? You've got an extra guy. You see Egloff coming in here, hands the ball back to Canada, pulls the linebacker, and goes in untouched. Well, he's not a guy that has seen the football a lot this year. Coming into today's game, 23 carries for just 72 yards and only one touchdown. But they're all in short yardage situations, which means if you can get two plus in a short yardage situation, you are doing more than your job. And he got the four he needed most. Buddy Steinford tries to make it a 14 to 7 game. And he drills it. So, 14 52 to play here in the second quarter. It is now San Diego C. Denver's scoring drive, 77 yards. It took him almost four minutes, but just eight plays. Larry Canada's four yard touchdown run. Brings this game to within seven points. Freddie Steinford is set to kick it away from the Bronx. Has a little squibber. Want to keep it away from James Brooks. It'll go out of bounds. Right in front of Pete Shaw. So now Denver will have to kick it from the 30-yard line. Take a look. Again, Egloff trying to lead the play. A little misdirection. Canada goes in untouched. When you pull it to within seven after it looks like you're going to get blown out early, that's right. All you have to do is look back to yesterday. Anybody that saw Pitt and Penn State play and know that the pitch started the same way, these games have a way of changing. Look at that time of possession in the first period. You talk about statistics not always telling a story. Eight minutes to San Diego's a little under seven. But the Chargers totally dominated that opening period of play, putting two touchdowns on the board. San Francisco leading the Giants. Up at Candlestick, 7 I think in the second quarter. There's the man they want to keep the ball away from. James Brooks, he leads the National Football League in all-purpose yardage with 1,578 yards, and he's done it in 10 games rather than 12. This time, they'll let him try again. From the 10. And a good tackle there by a guy who just joined the Denver Broncos. That is Roland Solomon. Brooks is a little slow getting up. Well, you can bet he'll be there at least one more week. You make a play like that, you get to stick around a while. Tampa Bay is stepping it out now over the Saints, 31 to 14. You wonder if Bum gave it his all against Houston last week. Well, it looked like they were going to go off. They got out to a 14 nothing lead in this ball game. Tampa comes back with 31 unanswered points. I think Tampa starting. It's another team starting to play real well late. Pittsburgh's playing real well late. Cincinnati's played well since the opening gun. And Dallas isn't too bad either. All right, while the San Diego medical staff looks over, James Brooks will take a cookie out of Auburn. James Brooks, last week, 155 yards in return, 30 yards. I think he had a season last week. He walked <laughs> up under his own power, so he assume he will return. First and 10, long running back is Chuck Muncy. And he has the football. He dropped it and covered it. He had it for a while. Billy Thompson almost got to it also. Yeah, but it's the mark. That time it wasn't a fumble per se. It was a great play by Thompson to strip him of the ball. He still kept his attention on it. Okay, he lost it. He hasn't looked down the field anywhere else. He happens to be spinning right toward the ball. Good break, but good attention. Well, the Chargers have fumbled 31 times this season. That's the most in the AFC. Oakland has come back to tie that game. Against Seattle, San Francisco with another touchdown over the Giants. Gotta like that, John. I do. Second and seven. Fouts. Got a man. Joiner with a first down at the 40. Aaron Kyle rolls him under a pickup of 15 yards. Well, he picked out the right receiver. Fouts is noted for it. All the way, he's on Joiner. Has a little problem in some other areas on that particular play. Anybody that watches Kellen Winslow on this play, he makes a good block on Greg Boyd. I didn't think he got out, but he never tried. Now, Kellen is a complete football player. He can catch, he can block, he can even run with the ball. Bounce on Kristen 10, lots of time. Now, the guy he was looking for was the tight end. Look out of Maryland, Eric Seaver, Tom Jackson was right there. I want to see the quarterback that can make that throw effectively. That time Fouts stepped to his right, and he, he saw Seavers, he saw him coming all the way across the field. 
He tried to make a throw across his body almost at a 180 degree angle. Now, I don't think you'll try that very often. <laughs> Danny, you're a great quarterback, but don't try that one again. No. Uh, he's been outstanding this year. 28 touchdowns. Second and 10. All the time in the world. Bounce for Chandler. receiver to get open the pattern took a little bit developing he got thrown he threw the ball and I can't understand what he hit but he is hand. in pain and he must have hit his hand on I don't know what on it must have been on his own thigh pad I'm thinking you're right his follow through carried his hand into his own thigh pad because nobody was close Chandler three receptions for 94 yards bounces seven for ten he'll put it up the 11th time he's going for it oh look at Chandler Go pattern to end simply out overthrow. Well, it's the kind of pass that he didn't know Aaron Kyle was going to fall down because that ball had already left his hand at that time. He is hoping for a perfectly timed ball. Looked like a very badly thrown ball, but it really uh, just a bad break. Looked bad, not too badly thrown. It is now second and ten. The Chargers over the football again. White scales, Charlie Joyner, the wide receivers, as West Chandler comes out to take a breather. plays you draw in the sand in the backyard. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, and you always have a 245 fullback to run it that can run about a 4-5-40. This man is the most fluid athlete I think I've ever seen with a football in his hand that weighs over 225 pounds. Now that's something James Brooks might be expected to do. But this man is he's a horse of a man. He gets in the open field and he looks like a what, an acrobat? He's incredible. He had a 73-yard touchdown pass two weeks ago against Seattle. I tell you, when he breaks into the clear, the afterburners come on, and he is gone. And you're right, for a man his size, it's incredible. Ten carries, 57 yards, bounce on third and two. The ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage by Tom Jackson. You know, so often you only hear about the sacks and the interceptions. And those pressures and those back downs sometimes are just as effective. Yes, sir. And those licks that they pass after you throw the ball, they take their toll also. Now Denver, as you look at that statistic, third in the National Football League in points allowed, 194. Well, their defense has really kept them in ball games throughout the whole first part of the season. And I think we mentioned earlier that last week was the first time they'd been blown out. Fourth and three from Ed Luther's hold. And remember, he's a quarterback. The Chargers have not faked the field goal yet this year. But Erska has hit from the 50 and the 52 here in 1981. This will be a 50-yarder from Luther's hold. Does it have enough distance? He had the right trajectory, but not quite enough foot. So the Denver Broncos will take over at the 40-yard line. They trail with 11.23 to go in the second quarter, 14-7 on this facility in San Diego, California, where the Chargers have a 14-7 lead over the Denver Broncos. There's a final, Tampa Bay. Boy, they fell behind 14 to nothing and came roaring back. First and 10, Denver. Trouble holding on to the football comes down with it and is hit right That's there by Pete Shaw. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. San Diego. Phil Stone and John Brody here in San Diego, and we have a good one. Now, we talked early on about if the Denver Broncos ever come up with what would be considered an outstanding running back, they would be awesome. And they've had a few over the years, but. Uh, They've got good ones. They haven't got the great ones. In motion, Ron Egglaw. On second and nine, Morton. 
Over the middle to Upchurch, and he is hammered. Pete Shaw is the guy that smacked him. Willie Buchanan was on the coverage there also. Upchurch is all right. He's still on his feet. Well, he was hammered, but it was also a perfect throw. That's the kind of that's the kind of catch you have to make in a big ball game to keep your club alive. Rick Upchurch has not been asked to go in the middle very often. He's been great on screens, quick screens, short outs. You got to come down with some of those. Now that's a big play for Denver because now instead of a first down out near the 46, it's third and nine. Three wide receivers now for the Broncos. San Diego counters with the five defensive backs from the shotgun. Wooden just lost the football. He was trying to double pump and just lost the football. Let's go to New York in Byron Day. Okay, Phil, thank you very much. Up in the kingdom, Jimmy Zorn having a little bit more success than Morton throwing the football on this trip. Here he completes a 32-yard pass to Sam McCullough. That sets the Seahawks up on the two-yard line. They're threatening to the score in their ballgame. It's still 3-3 in the second. Phil? Thank you very much, Byron. It's good to see the Seahawks have found the formula for winning in their own stadium. <laughs> they might have just borrowed it. I, I'm not convinced they've got it. <laughs> Luke Prestridge is on, averaging just about 41 yards a kick. And this is a low and not a good kick. And it hits Preston, and Hank Bauer very alertly comes up with the ball. That was a fumble or a muff ball there. 27-yard punt, a six-yard return. So San Diego has the football when we come back. 10-22 to play in the second part of the day. I'll tell you, the Oakland Raiders continue to have their problems in 1981. Who would ever have guessed that? I think a lot of people would have, actually. <laughs> First and 10 of the 45. Muncie. And he'll get a couple. Rulon Jones, Reuben Carter. Randy Gratishar was there. Well, you've seen neither team really establish that they can run the ball at the line of scrimmage. San Diego did it early, but I think a great reason for that is the middle of Denver's line. They're not going to try to make a living running the ball against Denver when you've got Randy Gratishar, Bob Swenson, Jackson, Evans. These guys are great players, and you don't run it down their throat. Well, not very often you don't. It is now second and seven. James Brooks back in the ball game. Tries to turn the corner. Cannot do so. Bob Swenson is there to drag him down. We take a look at scores around the league. Atlanta continuing to lead Houston. Pendant running that game now in the second period. That update you just saw from Byron Day. Seattle has just broken on top of the Raiders 10 to 3. San Francisco continuing in the second period over the Giants 14-0. tell you last night I wouldn't have given you two hoots for the kind of day we'd have today it's beautiful isn't it always beautiful in California it normally is Decline. it normally Burn is down. a penalty against San Diego was declined they'd rather only give him one opportunity at him on third and six than two from 12 yards away about seven of 12 already has thrown 140 yards Muncie with two touchdowns. 9.42 to play in the first half. <laughs> Joiner in motion. And they go to Charlie. And Dan overthrows him. And Dan goes down. And that's one of the, that's one of the few times, Phil, that you see a pick play. All three San Diego players that were really instrumental in the play had a problem. Fouts fell down when he threw it. He threw the ball over Joiner's head. And Kellen Winslow was called for picking. Exactly what are they talking about? Like a basketball pick? Well, what you do is you're, you're keeping the defensive linebacker, who in this case... Number 80, decline, fourth down. He's keeping him from being able to get on his assignment, okay? And when he did so, uh, the official alertly picked it up. I, I think the officials, you know, are having more trouble this year because they've been given so many judgment calls. I think they've finally overloaded them to where people can criticize with some justification. And I don't think you're going to see it. This game has been very well officiated so far today. And I don't think you're going to see it in the future. I think they're going to change some of the officiating uh, rules. And, and I think it'll be better for the game to take the heat off the officials. 
I think you're exactly right, John. George Roberts is on to kick it away for San Diego. Wade Manning is the lone man. Back a high snap. Roberts comes down with it and gets off a good kick. Wade Manning coughs it up. There's a flag, Phil, but I do think it's San Diego's ball. That is Wyatt Henderson coming away with a football. Manning with a muff. A 41-yard kick, and I believe you're right, John. I think San Diego will come away with a football, and they will. That was just a muff. He really never had the ball to fumble it. Never had it clearly, but boy, what an excellent pickoff. Number 32, Wyatt Henderson made one of the big plays of the day. Illegal use of the hands. 31, defense, decline, first down. Now the call is against Mike Hart. Illegal use of the hands. Big, big turnover for San Diego. Denver now with 29 turnovers this year is Dan Reeves. Exhorting his ball club to hang in there. This is when you see two of the best doing what they can do right now. San Diego trying to stop a great offense. I mean, Denver. First and 10. Oh, look at this. End around. Chandler. John, you see the Chargers do very rarely. They are not what you'd call a razzle-dazzle football team. But they know they're playing a great defense. They've got, they know the flow is so fast by those linebackers. They've got to do something to change it up. They give it to a man that can do something when he's got his hands on the ball. Number 89, West Chandler brings it down to the five. Joyner comes out of the ball game. West Chandler is out of the game. Two tight ends for San Diego. Winslow and Sievers are in. John Capaletti is the up back in the eye. Second and one. Pitch, Munson. What's that, 17 for the year? 17 touchdowns, he's only two away from the record. I, I tell you, I've seen San Diego play so many years and I've never seen them as good from the 15 in. They're not playing a bunch of empty chairs out there. They're just getting their offensive linemen out in front of people. Look what Ed White does. They call him Fat Eddie. He can still lead a play about as well as anybody in the game. <laughs> well, he wears designer jeans by Orson Welles. It is 20 to 7, San Diego. Ralph Panerska is on to try and tack on the point after from the hold of Eddie Luther. Bounces it back. And the ball was not cleanly put down. And it is wide left. Now those are the kind of things that can come back to haunt you. Take a look at it again. I'll tell you what, it was a tough, it was a tough play for Luther, but I think it's one you have to expect him to make. He's there because he's got a fine pair of hands. He got his hands cleanly on the ball. If you do make a bad snap, make it low. That's my motto. Well, that's the sixth extra point Rolf has missed this year. He's 45 out of 51. There you take a look at Chuck Muncy. Uh, John, we've talked about the job the running backs and wide receivers have done, but boy, what an offensive line San Diego has. You've got that right. I tell you, the Jets have a pretty good offensive line, too. They're just running over people. Pittsburgh's not having too much trouble with L.A. That game's over. Cincinnati over Cleveland, 41 to 21. What happened to the Browns this year? Everybody thought they'd be there come playoff time. St. Louis has hung another one on Ron Earhart's Patriots, 27 to 20. Buffalo has beaten the Washington Redskins by a touchdown. The Bills will be here next Sunday. And that'll be a great ball game here on NBC. Tampa Bay over New Orleans. Green Bay has beaten the Minnesota Vikings. Wanerska sends it to Rob Lytle at the 14. And Lytle with a good return out across his own 35-yard line. Irvin Phillips drags him down. 21-yard return. Atlanta. Oh, that second quarter is lasting forever. 10-0 without a score. Uh, look at the skies over Southern California. Seattle continues to lead the Raiders by a touchdown. Don't forget we'll have all the scores, highlights. At 
halftime on NFL 81. Two tight ends now for the Denver Broncos. The lone setback is Carlos. Ron Eglon, one of those tight ends, goes in motion play action. Crossing pattern, Upchurch. And a free safety. Pete Shaw drags him down. Now there's a well-designed play. It's a little play action fake to get the linebackers out of the way. Morton does that superbly. He throws the ball very well in the middle of the field. I think his height helps him be able to uh, helps him to do it. But Upchurch catches it on the dead run for 23 yard gain. And you know those scores that we saw just a moment ago. The key ones are the scores like Pittsburgh. They win. They're eight and five. Okay. That's right. Now you take Buffalo. They win. They're right in the hunt. San Diego knows it has to win to stay in the hunt. First and ten. And the give is right up the middle. It is Rick Peros. First year man out of Utah State. And Louis Kilcher is right there to bring him down with a little help from Leroy Jones. Well, Denver's trying to move where San Diego's the strongest. Number 74 and number 68. Leroy Jones takes on the lead block very well. Forces the back to fall over his own men, and Kelcher falls on top of the runner. That's a tough way to go. Tony Reed has come into the Denver backfield. He'll join Perros in the eye. Now they shift out. Wide receiver to the left. Top of your screen is Rick Upchurch. Watson to the bottom. Now Watson goes in motion. Sweep right. It is Reed. Oh. What a job. Leroy Jones did sniffing it out. That's two great jobs in a row. A lot of times you'll see a guy make three or four real good plays or have a real good game because the game plan was designed to attack this man. And Leroy hasn't had the year he's had in the past, but today he has stood ground. This is this is super play. Let's nobody handle him, stops the play for a four-yard loss instead of otherwise about an eight-yard game. John, when this season began, Leroy was, I think, a little bit jealous of all the attention Kelcher, Johnson, and then Fred Dean were getting. He says, hey, I'm pretty good myself, guys. Denver on third and 12. What all the time in the world's got up church. And again, the San Diego defensive secondary is caught in athlete. Well, I think it's a, it's a very simple idea. They're just using up church more than they have in the past. They've been using them on screens and, and quick little diddly bump stuff. Today, they've thrown them down the field four times. They've been effective twice. And both for big games, he almost broke this into the end zone. 38 yards and a first down on the seven. Now that's a big play for Denver again. It was third and 12. Certainly a punting situation if they do not make it. And again, the Charger defensive secondary collapses. Well, he put an excellent move. He did leave him both sitting on the ground, but he made an excellent move. First and goal from the six. Peros. And he is tipped up right there by Woody Lowe, the linebacker who penetrates very, very well. The guy he shot right past was Tom Velasic. It is second down. No gain whatsoever. In fact, I think they lost about a half yard. Denver brings two tight ends into the game. Egloff and Riley Odom. Interestingly enough, Steve Watson, Broncos' leading receiver, has yet to catch a pass today. Tony Reed, the long running back. Morton, the go for it. It is Reed. And that is sheer determination. That is a great play. Sometimes it's a 40-yard run. Sometimes it's a three-yard scramble after you're just about knocked for a one-yard loss. The difference in execution between the seven yard line and the two and a half yard line is big. And I think it might it might change the whole play selection because I think now they can take two downs and try to run the ball in for a touchdown rather than otherwise having to throw and settle for the field goal if it was incomplete. I mean, that's the kind of play that turns a game around and it looks like nothing. Absolutely right. Willie Buchanan, who was in on the hit there, is coming out of the ball game. Denver now on third and goal. They've converted four of seven thus far today. Wyatt Henderson is going into the game to replace Buchanan. I got a feeling Willie will be back. Morton, 12 of 18, 158 yards and one interception. Canada, Rob Lytle running back.
Ryder. Super D. Super D. The man there was Alan Ellis. He's the guy who caused Lytle to run so deep and ultimately shoved him out. And Louis Kelcher wasn't far off. When you're 320 pounds or however big he is, he almost got there in time himself. We discussed they might go for the touchdown. Here's a decision that's tough for a coach to make. But I think Reeves is having to go at it. I know Craig is, wants to go over and talk to him about it because I don't think he agrees. You remember a couple weeks ago he made a decision to go for a fourth and one when he had I something? remember it well. And at that time, he, he said, hey, you know, I really didn't think about punting. I just changed the play selection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the two of them will talk again. Well, don't forget, we are four minutes and eight seconds away from halftime. We will be going to New York for all the scores and highlights. And Steinford is coming in the ball game to kick a field goal. This time, Morton got his point across, I believe. I think it's a good move. Jeremy. I agree. You, you I have do to agree. get points. Well, if they didn't make away. it, to make a decision like that, it's that critical to the outcome of a ball game in the second quarter isn't necessary. The missed extra point allows them to go for the field goal and keep them within 10. Exactly. Now Steinford is on. I'm not certain that it comes from the hold of Luke Prestridge. To my knowledge, uh, Denver does not fake the field goal with Prestridge holding. Have you ever seen him this year? I don't think they'll fake it. I think they'll kick it. You're right. Be a good move. You've got to come away with points this early in the ballgame. A converted field goal from 21 yards out now brings you right back in this game. A 10-point margin instead of 13. that right but you know the funny thing is I wonder who schedules these things <laughs> was this supposed to be as big a game as it is or next week's game as big a game as it is in about four different cities eight eight groups going for five spots it's uh, good luck to y'all that's right the up man it is Pete Shaw across the 25 and a good return by Pete He's a safety by trade, not a re kickoff return man. He does an excellent job outside the 35-yard line. We talked about the record in the AFC West. Here are the overall records of the teams that are in line for the playoff spots. And those are for the wild card. And I'll tell you something. There's the divisions within that's a conference. San Diego knows it's got to win from here on out. Muncie, right side. And he is tripped up as he nears the 40-yard line. Muncie, 13 carries already for almost 70 yards. He already has three touchdowns here today. Bob Swenson is there to drag him down. Muncie coming back from a broken hand, which he broke the first time these two teams met about mile high. Hey, he's, he's been the complete football player since he's been in San Diego, and, I think, and it hasn't gone unappreciated. Now, last year, folks were not saying too many kind things about him when he was confident in the football, but here in 1981, has to be his best year ever, and he has the football again. And the flag is down. You see the way he strung out that Denver defense, John? Well, I'll tell you who strung it out is Bob Swenson. Uh, but when you've got a guy it is against San Diego. But when you've got a man that's like Muncie, you have to string it out to let the pursuit catch him. He did that, but he you get a guy like Muncie, he's going to find a crack where no one else will find it. You don't know that it's hard to realize there are cracks big enough for 240-pound backs. Holding number 64, offense, second down. That's a big one against San Diego. That'll take the ball back inside the 30. He's second down and 16. They're calling the ball spotting on the 29-yard line. San Diego already with three penalties for 20 yards. They're averaging about eight penalties again. 
Chargers, the most penalized team in all the football, but as John mentioned earlier, most of those penalties have come against the defense. Bounce with time. Seavers. Larry Evans, the inside linebacker on the left side, is there to close it down after a pickup of about four. It'll be third and long, and Dan appears to might have taken a little shot. Well, I think it's something to do. I think his health is not as good as he seems to, he seems to be letting on. Now, he's been hurting three or four times when he hasn't been hit. I got the feeling it's in his back or somewhere in his ribs, and uh, he's not making it a public issue because he doesn't want to set himself up as a target, but there, he's in pain also. There's no doubt about it. I talked to Dan yesterday. I said, how is your bruised rib? And he says, I only wish it were bruised. Yeah. You're right, he is hurting. The way he had to throw it, it's the hardest ball in the world to throw as far as if you have a bad rib because you got to put some juice on it and just take a look at Danny after he throws this ball. It doesn't look like look a man that's that. happy over a 20-yard completion. I'll tell you, the picture tells a thousand words right there. Remember, Ed Luther's their second quarterback. I'm not sure he might not play if anything happens further to Dan. All right. 23-yard completion of first down at the Denver 42. We'll be back in just a moment. Bill Stone and John Brody at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium where the Chargers have a 20-10 lead over the Denver Broncos. Broncos, incidentally, have a perfect record on natural grass. They are 8-0. They're 8-0. I think they're 0-4 on, the, on the synthetic surface. They like the surface, and I'm not sure they like San Diego. <laughs> Little swing pass to Muncie. He breaks one tackle. And the guy who had a shot at him behind the line was Tom Jackson. He could not hold him. Or was it Bob Swenson? It was Bob Swenson who had him at the backfield. Jackson brought him down after a pickup of nearly eight yards. Bounce 10 of 16, 176 yards. And there is no question, Dan is hurting. Joyner goes to the top of your screen. West Chandler's wide left. Muncie will take it through the right side. And he has the first down, I believe. Reuben Carter is there to close it up. Seventh year man out of Miami of Florida. Don't you know he's loving what his Hurricanes have done this year? Well, you know, people really don't run his area very often, but he handles his own area about as well as any middle, uh, any man over the, over the nose guard has ever done. And maybe that's why you don't see an awful lot of them. They don't try it. That is San Diego's 12th first down this afternoon. 50 seconds to play, first half. Again, Joyner, wide right. Muncie right up the middle. Close it down. Reuben Carter is there again with Rulon Jones, and the fans do not like it here in San Diego. Well, they don't realize the conditions that exist. Uh, he calls time right now. He's still got 42 seconds, plenty of time to get a score. They've got a couple timeouts left, 32 yards to go. It only takes a short while to get in the end zone, you know. People seem to rush to a verdict when they really don't know anything about it sometimes, and I think the fans were guilty of it then. San Francisco now leading the Giants 14 to 3 as Dan Faust on the near sideline talking things over with Don Coriel. Dave Levy is right there. Now you talked about the potency of the Charger offensive attack. They don't need 42 seconds to put a touchdown on the board. Not this team. Well, what, what they really do need is they don't want to give the ball back to Denver, of course. They've got a couple timeouts. It's second down right now. They're going to see what they can do. And, and they really have plenty of time to operate. Uh, we take a look at uh, Reeves on the other side, Craig Morton with his head down. This is a critical drive right here for, for several reasons. One, Fouts is hurt, and he may not be able to finish the ball game. They're down to a 10-point lead, and the momentum has switched. And if Denver can hold right here, this ball game is back in the hat. 42 seconds to play. Don't forget, we'll be going to New York for all the scores and highlights on NFL 81, so don't go away. Kellen Winslow is lined up in the backfield here. He's going to try to go wide. Bounce near sides, tight end Eric Seaver. And he is down at the eight-yard line. The clock continues to run, and San Diego will stop it. 30 seconds on the clock, and it is stopped.
Steve Foley is there on the stop. The rookie tight end with 24 yards, and you have to wonder if after the the uh, watch the play of Faust. Now he sits there and picks off his tight end receivers coming across, but allows him to go all the way past the last linebacker. It's one of the hardest throws in the game. He makes it perfectly, puts him, sets him up with a first down inside the tent, and lo and behold, he's still got 30 seconds to play with. John, the point I was going to make is Kellen cut five touchdowns last week. You wonder if maybe the game plan was let's use Kellen as somewhat of a decoy today, and let's slip the rook out and let him catch a few. I think they don't, they don't kind of try to, to, to share in the balls caught necessarily necessarily Phil but it is definitely the plan they're coming to Seavers for one reason Thompson is staying in the middle when Ken's when Winslow's lined up in a fullback position that puts Seavers in a one-on-one -on -one play with a linebacker okay because remember Thompson is normally a strong safety so he'd be one-on-one -on -one. but he's man-to-man -man with Ken with Winslow and that gives Seaver a chance to do some operating and Fouts is going to take advantage of that we mentioned it early, and uh, things haven't changed. When you talk about reading a defense, which Dan is so adept at doing, what are you basically talking about when you talk about reading a defense? Are you looking at one position or another across uh, the line? What you do is you notice one of those fellows in the other colored jerseys is in a spot where you'd really not like to see him or would like to see him. In this case, Thompson, a great strong safety, is nullified. That's reading. San Diego with one timeout left. The lone setback is Muncie. He scored three times today. Joiner is in motion. Muncie, three pass. Can you believe it? I think he stepped out. They are going to call him out of bounds at the three-yard line. It looked from here as if he had number four today. He didn't step way out, but it sure looked as if he did step on the line. A little screen pass. We mentioned San Diego throws him as well as anybody, and Muncie does what he has to when he gets the ball. He barely stepped out, but he did. I'll tell you, Fouts is having the kind of day Morton had the first time these two teams met. 12 of 18, 205 yards, and we aren't even at halftime yet. <laughs> we mentioned Kellen Winslow standing at the fullback position. This time, he was in a tight end position, really couldn't get in a position to help Muncie. Second and goal. This is Muncie. That's impressive. Chuck Muncy today, but what about the offensive line? They are just blowing the Denver defense away, John. I'll tell you, and that's you're blowing a great defense out. Now you know that the tone of the game is going to be set by which one of these two units dominates. So far today, it's been San Diego and number 46. There you see it. Four touchdowns today. He now has 18 on the year. The record is only 19 by Jim Taylor and Earl Campbell. And we've got a half to play. Manerska. This time he drills it through. 19 seconds to play here in the first half. And San Diego with 14 points in the first quarter. 13 more here in the second period. Have stepped it out 27 to 10 over the Denver Broncos. And if you're Dan Reeves, what do you tell your guys at halftime? Just keep plugging, guys. Anything can happen because these guys have also moved the ball very well on San Diego's defense, and Fouts knows. Let's start out, boys, and throw as much at the wall as we can and hope some sticks because it's happened too many times. They get a lead, and they get right back in the ball game. So uh, this baby's got 30 minutes and a lot of action left. Well, I would assume, uh, John, you go with what brung you, as they say, and you don't really go into the locker room and change a whole lot. But I think the encouraging part for Dan Reeves is Craig Morton is much more effective than I certainly thought he'd be. And, and in my opinion, more effective than Dan Reeves thought he'd be. So they have a case. Well, Chuck Muncy with his four touchdowns today has just wiped out Lance Allworth's record from way back in 1964. He held the Charger record with 14 touchdowns in a season. You'd say, a team, you'd say a team that does that is generally a team that runs the ball and grinds it in. Right? Absolutely. Fouts has thrown 28 touchdowns, too. Incredible. Albanerska will bounce this one around. It is Wade Manning at the 13-yard line. And Scott Fitzke, a wide receiver who just came on about a week ago, brings him down. A little help from Bob Greger. On the 11-yard line. 
Oh, yeah, that runs nine seconds off the clock, ten seconds to play, and Denver, I gotta believe, will just be content to run it out. Yeah, a little illustration. Had they call timeout with a minute and 40 seconds to play instead of 42 seconds to play, they'd have a minute and 10 left. They don't. Denver has to go into the locker room at halftime without any, any opportunity to put more points on the board. A little vulnerable on occasion. I think most of it has to do with San Diego and Cincinnati. Third and six, the Joyner. Now Charlie Joyner gave it every ounce of he could possibly give it. Billy Thompson was there on the coverage. Now Ed Luger has not had an opportunity to play much this year, John, but he is a fine, fine quarterback. And he played an awful lot in the preseason. And anybody that's watched him said he might have been as sharp as any quarterback in the game during the preseason. And down the line, he'll be an outstanding quarterback. Now you're going to talk about outstanding people. You have to put Charlie Joyner in that category at 34 years of age. Fifth in the AFC in yards with 862 coming in. Rolf Banerska from 41 yards out. And he fell down. Banerska is on his keister at the 30. He has lost his footing. So at 10 minutes, 33 seconds to play, the Denver Broncos will take over. San Diego leads it. 34 to setting in the West. The lights come on here at San Diego Stadium. The Denver Broncos have the ball. Banerska has made 72% of his field goal attempts. I don't think that's exactly what he meant to do. Hard to make it from that position. Yeah. First in 10, Denver.